Hello, dear classmates. Welcome back to the VLSI testing class. This is Design for Testability Part 2. It is about external scan or JTAG. This is our cross-row map. As a designer, we already know how to insert internal scan chain within a chip, but this is not good enough. To test a board, we still need external scan chain. Here is a motivating problem. Suppose you buy six chips and assemble a board. Your manager asks you to test the board and the chips. Since the board is already assembled, you cannot disassemble the chips. So how can we do it? In this chapter, we will learn the concept of JTAG, which is also known as IEEE 1149.1 standard. We will also understand the concept of board level testing. Here is a wise saying from Adam Israel. He said that in school, we learn things, then take the test. In life, we take the test, then learn things. We wish you learn a lot about testing from this chapter. In the DFT part two chapter, we will first give a brief introduction about JTAG. Then we will introduce JTAG architecture and the components. Then we will go into the details of some JTAG instructions. Then we'll conclude this chapter. So what is external scan? We already know the concept of internal scan. For internal scan, we stitch the internal free flop of our system logic into scan chains. However, this is not good enough because we cannot control the chip system input and we cannot observe the chip system output. For external scan, we stitch the chip input and the chip system output into an external scan chain so that we can observe and control the chips system inputs and outputs. That's why the external scan is also known as boundary scan because it is wrapped outside of the system logic. To perform boundary scan, a standard is needed because on the board, those chips come from different vendors. If we want them to be tested together, we need to have a standard. So IEEE has 1149.1-1990. Boundary Scan Standard, which is also known as the JTAG Standard. So why do we need Boundary Scan? The first reason is that we want to have bore level test and the diagnosis support. Number two reason is that we want to test the onboard interconnect among different chips. And number three reason is that we want to test on chip system logic when this chip is on the board. For the first reason, we want to have board level test and diagnosis support. Suppose on this board, we have six chips. If we want to test the board and all the chips on the board, we need to stitch all the chips into a long JTAG scan chain like this.
By doing the boundary scan chain, we are able to test the chips. So in this way, JTAG enables bore level testing and diagnosis. Please know that this testing can be done offline or online. That means we can debug the board while the board is in normal operation. So the number two reason to have boundary scan is to test on board wires among chips. Suppose that these two chips are on the same board. If we want to detect a bridging fault among these two chips or a stuck up fault on the interconnect wires, we can use boundary scan. We shift in 101 pattern to detect these two faults. At the output side of chip number one, we apply the test pattern 101. On the input side of chip number two, we are supposed to capture the same pattern 101. If this bit is flipped to zero, then we detect the bridging fault. If this bit is flipped to zero, then we detect the stuck at fault. So the output of this JTAG is supposed to be 101. Please know that in this picture, we assume wire end for model. The third reason to have boundary scan is that we want to test on chip system logic. Suppose we want to test this chip, which is already assembled on board. So we cannot use ATE tester to test this chip then we can use boundary scan chain. We can shift in the test pattern 110110 to test this end gate. The good outputs are supposed to be one, zero, and zero. So in this way, we can test the on-chip system logic while this chip is already assembled on board. Here is a quiz for you. Which of the following statement is not true about boundary scan? A. Boundary scan enable bore level testing. B. Boundary scan requires the standard because chips are from different vendors. C. Boundary scan can replace internal scan. Have you got the answer? It is C. Boundary scan is not a replacement for internal scan. Boundary scan helps to perform bore level testing, while internal scan is used to test the system logic on the chip. So in the second half of this video, we will introduce JTAG architecture and uh, two components, tap and tap controller. The other two components will be introduced in the next video. This slide shows a simple JTAG architecture. In this architecture, JTAG has four important components. Number one is test access port or tap. Number two is a tap controller. Number three, JTAG registers include instruction register, boundary scan registers, and the bypass registers. And the fourth component is an instruction decoder, which is shown in green. 
In JTAC, we have four mandatory test access port or TAP. TDI stands for test data input. TDO stands for test data output. TCK means test clock. TMS is a control input which stands for test mode select. So we have three input test access port and uh, one output test access port. If you have an extra pin available, there is one optional test access port, TRST, which is a reset of test logic. This is an active load input. The number two component of the JTAG is the tap controller. The tap controller is a 16-state finite-state machine which controls the operation of the JTAG. On our right-hand side, we can see the state transition diagram of this finite-state machine. On this diagram, the number here is the value of input TMS and this finite state machine is clocked by TCK. We can roughly divide these states into two groups. The yellow blocks represent the states related to the data register or DR. On our right hand side, the pink blocks are those states related to the instruction register or IR. On the upper left corner, we have the test logic reset state. This is an initial state that we should start from every time we use the JTAG logic. So how can we bring the finalized state machine to the test logic reset state? There are two methods. Method number one, we can keep applying a sequence of ones to TMS. This will bring us to the test logic reset state no matter where we are initially in. For example, suppose that we are initially here. If we keep applying one, then we will back to the test logic reset state. This is a very smart design of the finite state machine. The other solution is that we can use the optional tap TRST pin to reset the JTAG logic. In summary, in this video, we have introduced the boundary scan or IEEE 1149.1 JTAG standard. The boundary scan DFT enables board level testing and we can test the onboard interconnect between two chips. We are also able to test the on-chip system logic. We introduce two important JTAG components. They are test access port and tap controller. The other components will be introduced in the next video. Before we end this video, we have an interesting FFT for you. In our previous slide, we mentioned that if we keep applying once to TMS, we are able to return to test logic reset state. So what's the maximum number of ones we need to apply? before we can reach this state? Please think about this question. It should be easy. Thank you for watching.